thought this is the bit I hate. Take off. Just listen to those engines. That noise. I hate it. Oh, heck, here we go. Down the runway. Why is it always so bumpy? Oh, look how fast we're going. It must be 100 miles an hour. 200. Oh, we're only on three wheels. Oh, go. Oh, here we go. We're going up. It's too steep. We're too steep. Oh, I feel sick. I want to go off. Oh, help me, somebody. I'm going to faint. Oh, oh, we're up. We're up. Oh, we're up. Oh, oh, we're safe. Oh, 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 oh that's better. Oh, oh, I'm all right now. <laughs> oh, mm-hmm. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. This is your captain speaking. Welcome to Taylor Fairway Flight Passing Peter. I'm Robin, and I'm handsome. And I'm Morris, and I'm tall. I'm grey, I'm, I'm ugly, I'm short, and I'm fat, and I'm bald as a billiard ball. We're the Grumbleweeds. And we interrupt this programme with a news flash. Police today arrested their most wanted Irish criminal when he walked into Scotland Yard to complain that his photo fit picture didn't look anything like him. There's the three of us going on stage, hoping the studio's max. See the three of us acting our age. Sad Graham, he's aging our acts. That's nice. Great cannibal chief, I have a problem. What is it, fearless cannibal warrior? I have just eaten a Chinaman. What? What is your problem? Already I feel like another. <laughs> My hair's red as copper. My hair's real sick. My hair has all fallen out ages ago, but my head's a lovely pink. Where the grumbleweeds? Now then, son, I started with out. I tramped the grimy streets from morning till night. Summer and winter, come rain, hail, shine. And gradually, little by little, bit by bit, I clawed my way up the ladder of success. And now, after all these years, the time has come to hand over the reins. Yes, lad, you've stood in my shadow long enough. I've decided to let you take over the business. All this, lad, is yours. Now, what do you have to say, lad? I'm speechless with gratitude. It's more than I deserve. Thank you, Dad. Thank you. Say no more, lad, say no more. Here's your ladder, here's your bucket, here's your shadow. There's the three of us doing the job, taking the knocks on the chin. Yes, the three of us, Gray Mo and Rob, Graham, Maurice, and Robin. And welcome to Crime Watch Special. Were you in the vicinity of a Manchester bank, building society? or supermarkets on Friday last? If so, did you see a silver twin cam turbocharged Robin Reliant? <laughs> License number G7197ZEN, abandoned in a car park. If you did, it is imperative that you get in touch with us right away. As the wife can't remember where she parked it. <laughs> Things come in threes. I learned that as a lad. I'm Robin. I'm Morris. He's Graham. Well, two out of three is not bad. Trio. Everyone needs half an hour with someone and the grumble. Ladies and gentlemen, it is now my pleasure to introduce our guest for this week, who is a true international star. Whoever he is, I can't stick him. This man... I just can't stand him. You don't even know who he is yet. What's that got to do with it? Get him on. Well, I hope it's one of those famous film stars. I love famous film stars. Yes, especially if they're well-known. Mm. I've always been a film fan. Mm. Yes. So yes. have I, Geoffrey. Mm. I love a good thriller. Mm. It's a long time since I had one of them. Yes! <laughs> Do you know, I enjoy them films by the master of suspense, Alfred Cockich. <laughs> Hitchcock. 
everyone to their own, yes. Well, our special guest tonight is a star of film, cinema, silver screen and the movies. It's the famous, the distinguished actor, Graham Stark. How delightful a kind. I cannot tell you how delighted you must be to see me. A joy also for my faithful public. Get on with it, you toffy nosed thespian. Have you ever appeared in Shakespeare, Mr. Stark? Ah, oh, lady, Shakespeare. There can be little doubt that the play that made me the star that I undoubtedly am today was Richard the Sixth. Hang about, Richard the Third. I was in it twice. <laughs> Which is your favourite part, Mr. Stark? You know, your very, very favourite part. It is a part which I remember with the deepest love and affection. A part which stretched my unlimited talent to the very extreme. A part which took me to the heights, to the very top of the ladder. Are you there, Wally? <laughs> oh, hello, Archie! I'm on a roof. Would you, would you pass me the patty? I, I, I ate the butty when I had my cup of tea. <laughs> I can ask for no patty. Never mind. Tell me, what, what size of screws have you got? Pardon, Archie. I said, what size of screws have you got? Seven, but they hurt a bit. <laughs> I, I, I should really take an eight. I'm not talking. I'm not talking about no shoes, Wally. Look here. Pass the gutter up. Which buttercup? There's hundreds of them down here, actually. Wally, the last thing I want at this moment is a bar cut. Have you, have you got a knife? Pardon, Archie. Have you got a knife? You know I have, Archie. And I've, I've, I've been married 15 years. <laughs> Wally, would you listen to what I'm saying to you? I'm flogging a dead horse up here. How much do you want for it, Archie? <laughs> Wally, I am coming down. I mean, all I wanted was a party. <laughs> Look, here's a party. I mean, it's been here all the time. You last speak up, Patsy. I'm up the ladder. <laughs> Kiddies. <laughs> yes, once again it's me, your old friend Uncle Rubbish saying once again, hello kiddies, and welcome once again to Tiny Tots Tea Time, Toy Time Time Time. I can feel the nausea coming on already. Today I want you to guess what is inside the Tiny Tots Tea Time, Toy Time Time toy cupboard. <laughs> Go on. Have a guess. If he gets that rotten book of nature out, I'll ram it down his stinking throat. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't mean it. It wouldn't fit. <laughs> <laughs> yes, well, kiddies, Uncle Nasty is right. It is the Uncle Rubbish Wonder Book of Nature. Now then, shall we open it up page 27? Because on page 27 is one of my favourite chapters. Here we are. Chapter 5. <laughs> Discovering ponds. Chapter 6. Throwing you in one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not frightened. No, I love ponds. 
It's amazing what lovely, friendly creatures exist in the murky depths of a pond. I take my little plastic bucket and I wade into the middle of the pond and I dig down with my hands into the slime and sludge and bring up great handfuls of it. What it is I bring up, I'm not prepared to say. <laughs> but it stopped me biting my nails. You must have been a revolting little toad when you were a kid. Yes, I was, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I can remember when I was a very little toad. I found a water beetle that was limping. Yes, it had sprained its little ankle running for a bus. <laughs> so I took it home and put a splint on its poorly leg. And then I bandaged it with some of that ointment Daddy didn't tell Mummy he had to get. Six weeks later, I took off the bandage and you should have seen him scurry across the kitchen line. Oh, <clears throat> I called my father in and said, come and look at the water beetle. Those six weeks of patient and diligent nursing have paid off. And I can see him now as he came into the kitchen, tripped over the rug and trod on me beetle. <laughs> My, how I cried. I sobbed. But my father took me into his arms and comforted me. He said, Susan? <laughs> Get that squash beetle off the sole of my shoe or I'll belt you. I'm beginning to quite like your old man. <laughs> and he did. <laughs> oh, well, as they say in Barnsley, Say la vie. <laughs> bye bye, kiddies. Bye bye. You don't know Wally, mate. I'm not Wally, I'm Herbie. Well, I hope you're more help than what Wally was. I had to say everything twice to Wally. Pardon, Archie. <laughs> oh, blimey, I've got another one of them. I see, I had to say everything twice to Wally. I could go get you one, Archie. Give me one what? A nice lolly. <laughs> Here, I saw John Wayne on a telly last night. How do you feel now, Archie? <laughs> what are you on about, Herbie, mate? Said you had a pain in your belly last night. <laughs> you know, it's not easy working up here. You ought to try working on a roof. Better learn ya. Yeah. I wouldn't like that, Archie. Wouldn't like what? <laughs> wouldn't like working on a roof with an hernia. <laughs> Hurt me, mate. I'm struggling with an alteration up here. Blood the hand off you. <laughs> what, Will? <laughs> a dalsation, you struggle with it. Now, Herbie, mate, Herbie, Herbie, will you listen careful to what I'm going to say to you? Have you got a brace of bit? Pardon, Archie. <laughs> I say, have you got a brace and beat. She might be a brazen bit, but I've only known her a week, aren't she? <laughs> oh, this is it, this is it. Look, I'm coming down. Herbie, why don't you have your ears tested, Herbie, for my sake? God, I just, I just can't take any more of it. And Wally, Herbie's on his break. <laughs> Yes, and welcome once again to another edition of Music for the Masses with me, Ernest. And me, Geoffrey. We thought it was time we ventured into the field of light opera, didn't we, Geoffrey? We did, Ernest. 
I'd better get me coat on if we're going outside into a field. <laughs> so long. No, rat face, it's an expression. The field of light opera. Yes, and we thought we'd sing a song written by two of the most famous names in light opera. Kylie and Jason. <laughs> no, Gilbert and Sullivan. Never heard of them. Oh, they wrote loads of shows. Yeah. And we thought we'd sing something from the Mikado. Oh, lovely. I used to have one of them. What? A Mikado set. <laughs> I used to make everything, cranes, bridges... No, 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 the Mikado was the emperor of Japan. We're not going to Japan, are we? Oh, no, it's too far to go to sing a song. I like Japan. All them windmills. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what's that about? Look, are you interested in learning about the Mikado or not? Of course we are. Right. Well, there's Coco. I'm not thirsty. <laughs> No, Uncle Nasty, Coco is the Lord High Executioner. Now, there's three girls in the story. There's Yum Yum, Pity Singh and Pete Bo. He's making this up. <laughs> now, Yum Yum likes Nanky Poo. I'll bet she does. <laughs> but they don't realise that they've got to contend with Poo Bar. <laughs> well, to be honest, not many of us do. <laughs> Oh, this is ridiculous. Look, has anybody understood anything about what we've been saying? Of course we have. There's this fella, Yo-Yo. Boko. Coco. And he's in love with three birds. Tom-Tom, Bo-Peep and Pretty Grim. <laughs> Pity Sing. Yeah, her as well. <laughs> and hang on, there's somebody else that I haven't mentioned yet. It's Pish-Tush. Got it? <laughs> now, get it right. Pish-Tush. Pish tush. I'll fall down. <laughs> so now, Tom Tom likes Anki Panky. No, no, it's Yum Yum and she likes Nanky Poo. Right, Yum Yum likes Winnie the Pooh. Right. <laughs> no, it's Nanky. Oh, Yum Yum likes Winnie the Nanky. <laughs> I've never heard such a lot of old rubbish in my life. Who thought this lot up? Oh, Gilbert wrote the words and Sullivan wrote the music. Blimey, I can't wait to hear the music. <laughs> I won't hear a word against the music. Not a word. Sir Arthur Sullivan was responsible for the lost chord. Oh, well, that explains it. What do you mean? What chance has Gilbert got with a fellow who can't remember where he puts his music? <laughs> look, that's... Look, here's the words. Let's just have a bash. Are you ready on the piano, Ernie? Ready when you are. Righto. Ready, steady, go. Little maids from school are we? Her to the school girl well can be. Two little maids, don't look at me. Two little maids from the school. Three little maids who are all unwary. Come from a ladies' seminary. Two little maids, well, I'm too wary. Two little maids from school. Three little maids from school. Right, yum yum. Two little maids in attendance come. Two little maids is your maximum. Two little maids from school. Three little maids take one away. Two little maids remain and they couldn't get a smack in the gob today. Two little maids from school. Three little maids from school. Three little maids who are all unwary come from a lady's seminary. I'll never dress up like a fairy. Two little maids from school. Three little maids. What's from school? I'm not Abby. Then who are you? I'm Lou. All what I can say is, I hope you're better than the other two, Lou. Bargain, <laughs> Archie. Oh, no. No, not another one of them. Not three in a row. I say. I hope you're better than the other two. Lou, <laughs> what I'm trying to do is put this window in. You'll have to go for a sash behind the shed. <laughs> I had one ten minutes ago, <laughs> Look, 
I'm not interested. I'm not interested in what you had ten minutes ago. Right, Lou, a pain, a glass. Father, that's I said, Lou, a pane of glass. Where am I, the pane in the... That is not what I said, Lou. <laughs> now then, just... Just hold on to that ladder. It's very tricky up here for me. Do not let go of the ladder. Remember, do not let go of the... Ah! <laughs> oh, he fell off the ladder. Oh, has he hurt himself? He's just lying there. I'm not surprised. He couldn't hear a word anybody was saying to him. I had the same trouble with him. I saw a John Wayne picture on the telly last night. I can't eat anything with nuts in. I had one, but the wheel came off. What? Hey. Hey. And now we present Cookery for Idiots with our famous German chef, Herr Lacker. Thank you, and auf Wiedersehen, mein Herrings und mein Kippers. <laughs> Today we are going to make the famous dish eaten all over the world on Christmas Day. Pancakes. <laughs> yeah. First, we need the big and bucket. And into the big and bucket, we bung the eggs. <laughs> These eggs and fresh eggs and straight from the chicken. <laughs> bungen, 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 bungen. All in the big bucket. Eggs bunged. Oh dear. I have forgotten first to take out the floor cloth. Oh, never mind it. Well, that's the flavor. Ah, <laughs> oh, the disinfectant pancake. <laughs> so, into the eggs in goes the flour. Plonk. Whoosh! Flour everywhere. On the milk. <laughs> On the carbolic soap. Oh. And we put the lot under the mixer. And... <laughs> there we have the butter. Into the frying pan. Splushin, splushin. And now toss the pancake in the air. Whoosh! Oh, oh dear. I have forgotten to light the gas. This is catastrophic summer gun running. Oh. Donner und blitzen. The butter is all over the ceiling. Uh, well, I knew the floor cloth would come in handy. And we can always fry the carbolic soap for dindins. Auf Wiedersehen und hello. Yes? I'm sorry to be a nuisance, young master. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Who was at the, uh, was at the door? Some old geezer who said he was sorry to be a nuisance. <laughs> well, that wasn't very nice, was it? Slamming the door in his face like that. I'll see what he wants. Right, what can I do for you, old gentleman? What a delightful little girl. <laughs> do you, do you by any chance have any clocks what is need of repair and renovation by a master craftsman? Get lost, you senile old prat. <laughs> Hang on, there's that old cuckoo clock under the stairs. Now that hasn't worked for years. I'll get it out and you can have a look at it. How long have you been repairing clocks? I has been repairing clocks ever since my old father died. And when was that? About half an hour ago. 
Here it is. Oh, oh, what a beautiful cuckoo clock. It won't work and it won't cuckoo. Oh, I shall soon have it as good as new. Just look at that wood. Hoo-hoo. You don't get wood like that these days. You've got hold of me ad. <laughs> now, leave it to me, cos I will do a good job for you. What's the problem, then? Why won't it cuckoo? It's his beak. You just feel that beak. It's all bent and warped. You've got hold of me nose. <laughs> What I want to know is, why is its little beak bent? Cos the door's jammed. <laughs> What's that got to do with it? When it gets to the hour, the poor little cuckoo keeps banging his head against the door. <laughs> when it gets to 12 o'clock, he'd be lying there on his back like he's been ten rounds with Frank Bruno. Listen, you bag of old wrinkles. What I'd like to know is, how much is this lot going to cost us? A pittance, young master, a mere pittance. I can assure you, my charge will be exorbitant. Yeah. <laughs> You'll not get it done much cheaper than that, you know. No, it sounds reasonable to me. What I need is some glue and a screw. A little drop of glue should do. Just here. Dries very quickly. Excuse me. Yes? You've just stuck my legs together. <laughs> what you have to remember when you was a dealing with a delicate piece of mechanism like this is finesse. Delicacy and finesse, like so. <laughs> you are watching a master craftsman at work here, young sirs. Will you stop it? Stop it! He's only doing his job. The cellar! The cellar! What about the cellar? We didn't have one two minutes ago. <laughs> Sir, when I repair a clock, I always give my customers a free cellar. <laughs> so, is the cuckoo clock working now? Young Missy, that question is an insult to my ability as a clockologist. I'll just turn the hour end back to four, then you'll be well pleased. There. Any second... Now! Woo! 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 <laughs> Not many people has a clock what box. That'll be 20 quid, thank you. Hold on a second. Ah, just a minute. Where have the cuckoos gone? You've been here all the time. <laughs> We'll see you next time. Yes, we'll see you again. So, tickety tonk. Bye for now. Tutty bye and TTFN. From the three of us, just the three of us. There's me, and me, and him. Oh, they're always missing me out just because I'm littler than everybody else. I'm sick of this. <laughs> <laughs> I've been listening to Salmon and the Grammar Witch. Graham, Morris and Robin was a Grammar Witch. And I, Graham Stoll, was someone. The music was provided by Dave Collar, Per Duke and any marbles with looks by Jeremy Brown. The script was by Eddie Braben, Ron McDonald, John Brown. Richard Jones and the producer, Mike Craig. What cuckoo! <laughs> 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 <laughs>